So uh, I have with me three experts in femtolaser assisted cataract surgery. Uh, Dr. Fisher, um, and Dr. Fisher is from the medical director of the Eye Center of North Florida. Uh, I have Dr. Holzer, and he is the vice chairman and director of refractive surgery at the Department of Ophthalmology, University of Heidelberg, Germany. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. <laughs> and Dr. Tim Schultz uh, from the Department of Ophthalmology at the University Hospital, uh, Bo Bochum, <laughs> Germany. Um, so without uh, further delay, I welcome Dr. Fisher. All right, thank you very much, Linda. And uh, I've been asked uh, today to share with you the results of um, a paper that I presented here at the Academy that looked at the results of surgery with the femtosecond laser. So if we can uh, go ahead and go forward, thank you. Those are my financial disclosures, keep going. All right, the purpose of the study was to look at the impact of intraoperative aberrometry, a relatively new technology on uncorrected visual acuity and predictability in femtosecond laser cataract surgery. By way of background, there are published studies in the recent scientific literature that speak to the effectiveness of femtosecond, of, of just general cataract surgery, I'm sorry. The first of these, published in 2006, and all of these were before femtosecond lasers were used, showed that in a study of about 600 eyes, slightly less than half achieved the refractive accuracy that, uh, that we were looking for as surgeons. In a larger series in 2007, published in eye magazine or eye journal, about 2,700 patients that were, that were operated on using modern diagnostic and surgical techniques showed again about half of them achieved the uh, desired target in terms of accuracy. In the most recent sur um, survey in the literature that was published in 2012, which represented surgery done in 2008 to 2010, again, slightly more than half the patients achieved the refractive accuracy that we as surgeons are looking for for our patients. In this study, um, there was a single surgeon, myself, we looked at uh, two groups of eyes. The first one uh, was a group of patients that had cataract surgery with lens implantation utilizing the femtosecond laser without what we call intraoperative wavefront aberrometry using the aura system. In the second group, we looked at, again, consecutive cases that had cataract surgery with IOL implantation utilizing the same femtosecond laser, but now with the addition of intraoperative wavefront aberrometry. The eyes um, were fairly evenly matched in terms of male, female, and other demographic characteristics. You can keep going and keep going. Um, actually, can you go back one? With these groups at the bottom, you see there was a mixture of monofocal, uh, multifocal, and toric lens implants. So these were all different types of lens implants. So a very wide range of surgery, um, the typical things that we do every day. And actually go forward one. So if you look at eyes targeted solely for distance with the femtosecond laser, about 24, about, um, in, and we look at 2040 vision as legal driving vision, about 90% of our patients were achieving this benchmark, which was very high, with about half achieving 2025 or better uncorrected distance vision. Keep going. Now that number that you saw from the earlier study is what we call the mean absolute value of prediction error, which was about 50% or about half the patients. In, in the bar graph, which is less than or equal to 0 0.5, now about 69% of the patients with femtosecond laser cataract surgery were achieving this um, important benchmark. So we saw an improvement over the historically reported results in the literature from about 50 to 55% to 69% just with the addition of the femtosecond laser. And um, go forward one. Actually, that's fine. So in this, and this is the group two, the group that had both the femtosecond laser and this intraoperative aberrometry technology. Now 100% of patients achieved 2040, and about 73% achieved 2025 uncorrected distance vision. So very good results for these patients. And again, if we look at this benchmark statistic that we use to judge accuracy, about 80% we're now achieving 
this um, measure of accuracy as opposed to 50 to 55 percent in uh, the earlier studies. So there's a newer form of this um, intraoperative aberrometry. You can keep going. This is what it looks like to the surgeon. So we, um, before the academy, we actually included a small group that include this newer technology. Keep going. And um, in this, uh, actually keep going, keep going one more time. There you go. In this group of patients, the, that benchmark number rose to actually 88%. So approaching 90% of patients are now achieving the refractive accuracy with the newest technologies that we as cataract surgeons have available compared to 50% or so in the past. So that's, that's basically the information I want to impart to you. The rest of this is, you know, basically reemphasizing those same points. Thank you, Dr. Fisher. Thank we're, you. We're going to have to switch laptops, so if you just bear with us for just a moment. I also would like to present our findings regarding laser refractive cataract surgery. These are my financial disclosures or the financial disclosures of our research center, I have to say, especially Bausch & Lomb Technolas Perfect Vision needs to be mentioned. Um, if we talk about femtosecond lasers, they are on the market now since more than a decade. And you can divide uh, the applications into two parts. There's the cataract part here on the left side with uh, different systems being on the market and the refractive surgery uh, part on the right side, uh, those lasers are mainly used for LASIK flap preparation. And there's currently one laser, and that's the one that we evaluated, that's the Victus from Bausch & Lomb Technolas, that combines both the cataract surgery as well as the refractive part. So you can uh, cut LASIK flaps, you can also use it for therapeutic indications, that means uh, corneal transplant surgery, penetrating keratoplasty, for example. Then you can use it for refractive treatments uh, within the cornea without dissecting the surface. That's the so-called intracore presbyopia treatment procedure. And of course, the laser refractive cataract surgery. And here the Victus has FDA approval for capsulotomy and uh, the arcuate as well as uh, the um, limber relaxing incisions. The LASIK flap part is shown here. Um, that's a typical uh, femtosecond laser flap procedure. So you can use the system for all of your patients, the cataract ones, as well as uh, the refractive surgery ones. The flaps are easy to open, as you see here in this uh, video clip on the lower right. The intracore procedure, the specifics here are that uh, you're only treating inside the cornea. You do not dissect the surface, and you have altogether five uh, cylindrical rings inside the cornea, and they lead to a change in the corneal uh, surface and that leads to an increase of near visual acuity. Intracorneal ring segments can also be implanted with the system that's something you use for kerat keratoconus patients and uh, the keratoplasty procedure as well, lamellar and penetrating keratoplasty. Now let's come to the laser cataract refractive uh, part. Uh, what's important if you do something like that, that you really have a very good OCT, a live OCT image, you use uh, that technology in order to get um, a kind of uh, image of the anterior um, segment of the eye, the cornea, as well as the lens, and you plan your procedure using this information. And during the procedure itself, you also have a kind of live uh, coverage of what's going on. The patient is docked to the laser system. You use this uh, suction ring here that's placed on the, the eye that's anesthetized. And then you have a kind of traffic light uh, symbol where green means uh, that uh, the pressure is um, high enough and in the correct range. And then you can start the treatment. The treatment itself means that you use the laser and uh, that's uh, outside the US capsulotomy, lens fragmentation, as well as the incisions. Uh, within the US, uh, the lens fragmentation so far is not FDA approved. And the lens fragmentation patterns are interesting because, excuse me, you can use uh, different patterns. They are shown here on the right side. You can use uh, just uh, ring cuts like here. You can combine that with a cross pattern and uh, that's the one that I use most often and you can also just uh, do the fragmentation in one quadrant of the lens. So uh, several things are uh, possible here due to the um, yeah, computer that's used for the system. Now our study, and this is really a very scientific one because 
It's prospective, it's a contralateral study, randomized, and the investigator is masked. So the investigator does not know which procedure was done on which eye. Altogether, 30 to 35 patients. It's an ongoing study with very strict inclusion and exclusion criteria. All of them are listed um, here in this part. We can summarize the inclusion criteria means really a totally healthy eye and uh, then post-operatively and as well intraoperatively several parameters were evaluated. For example, the visual acuity, intraocular pressure, flare meter measurements, effective phaco time and then the capsulotomy, IOL, centration and so on. Getting to the, to the outcomes here, the visual acuity and for the visual acuity we did not find a significant difference comparing the manual procedure to the laser procedure and uh, this is up to six months post-operatively. Then another very important feature is intended versus achieved refraction. That means you go for a specific refraction after the cataract procedure and then later on you measure if you really hit that target or if you are a little bit off. And uh, if we do that for both procedures here again, there was uh, later on no difference, only at one month post-operatively that's uh, listed down here, there was a significant uh, difference, so just in the early post-op phase. Then the intraocular pressure, that is an important safety feature. Intraocular pressure was not elevated after the laser refractive procedure and also not uh, with the manual one. Another important feature would be flare meter measurements. Flare meter measurements means that you evaluate objectively the inflammatory reaction inside the eye after such a treatment and you could postulate that maybe after using a laser that uh, the inflammation is a little bit elevated and uh, therefore we did these flare meter measurements and interestingly there was no difference in comparison to the manual one. So here we can uh, say that the laser um, technique does not induce an additional inflammatory reaction inside the eye. We found a difference between the manual and the laser procedure regarding the effective FACO time, that means the amount of ultrasound energy that you use during your cataract surgery and uh, this was much lower with uh, the laser technique than the manual one and that's due to the case that you uh, use uh, the laser to get these small fragments of the lens and therefore you need less phaco energy during the surgery. The diameter it was measured. Here on the left side you see the uh, uh, capsulotomy performed with the laser and uh, the intended uh, diameter was 5.0 and we were really just uh, at that number 5.03. And with the manual technique, and that's an experienced surgeon, the manual uh, capsulotomy was slightly smaller, 4.5, so you can say about 10% uh, smaller than it was intended. Eccentricity of the capsulotomy was measured, 1.0 would be the ideal circle. With the laser system we were almost there, 0 0.97, and with the manual technique still good, but below the laser technique at 0 0.9. Endothelial cell count was performed as a kind of safety measurement in order to see if uh, the endothelium uh, is uh, in any harm due to the laser surgery or if maybe due to the fact that we need less phaco energy that uh, the endothelial cell count is even higher than with the manual technique. However, at one month and at uh, three months there was no significant difference between the two techniques. So we can conclude. Laser refractive cataract surgery with this Victor system is safe and predictable. Complicated cases are also suitable, precise and well-centered capsulotomies. Uh, I think that's very important in regards of premium IOL implantation. Good visual outcomes with both uh, techniques. We found a significant difference in terms of effective FACO time. And so far there was no significant difference in all other parts and especially also no difference in reg regards to inflammatory reaction after the procedure. The main advantage of this system, I think, is the wide field of application in cataract surgery as well as refractive surgery, so you can do the laser refractive cataract surgery part as well as normal LASIK flaps, you can use it for keratoplasty procedures and I think that's a very nice and good combination of uh, these two worlds in one system. Thank you very much for your attention.
drive from here. So the background of our my talk is um, that uh, FACO energy is one of the main factor that was identified in the literature to destroy endothelial cells. And so the aim of the study was to investigate if it is possible to reduce effective FACO time with the use of a femtosecond laser. These are the financial disclosures of our clinic. Um, so we had conducted a consecutive prospective trial and included 2,400 patients between December 2011 and October 2013 at a single center with one surgeon and in all cases the same equipment was used so for lens prefragmentation we used the catalyst laser system and for lens aspiration we used the Stellaris from Bausch & Blomb. So we have divided this laser patient into three groups so we skipped the um, initial learning curve so the first group was 650 patients then 1000 patients and we also have analyzed our last 400 and we compared it to manual patients that were operated just with uh, FACO. So the inclusion criteria excluded um, patients with a pupil size smaller than 6 millimeters. The log grading that is to grade how the opacity of the lenses, so how dense the lenses um, were between grade 1 and 4, so quite normal cataracts and a patient age of older than 22 years. Um, all patients were graded by one um, specially trained physician prior to surgery to make it objective and we used also the same setup in all these cases with uh, um, Hark strike slit lamp. Here are our results on this side you can see the effective FACO time and divided to the three groups grade 2, grade 3 and grade 4 and at the really beginning in the first 650 cases we were able to treat 90% in grade 2 without ultrasound energy in grade 3 we were able to treat 66% without ultrasound energy and in the hardest group we, group 4 we were able to treat 63% without ultrasound energy so overall we were able to treat 70% without ultrasound in between we have conducted many changes in the setup including changes at the settings at the FACO machine for lens aspiration we changed the tip that is in the eye to aspirate the lens so um, also the settings at the laser machine were changed and the laser machine was updated and also the technique in the eye, the manual technique was changed so here are our results from the patient the next 1000 patients again the same graphic and with this new setup we were able to treat 100% in grade 2 without ultrasound 89% in group 3 and 87% in grade 4 overall we were able to treat 95% treat without ultrasound then we have again changed our setup a little bit we induced a new FACO tip from MST and we also changed the setup for the laser settings our grid spacing in most of the cases is at the moment 300 microns so this is a, the distance between these little cubes so at all in our last 400 cases we were able to treat 99% without ultrasound energy and the three cases that still needed FACO were all, were all in the densest category in grade 4 so overall we were able to treat at the beginning 70% without ultrasound with this machine and with this full lens fragmentation and at the moment we are at 99% so we are very very close to totally eliminate ultrasound from cataract surgery. Thank you. So now we're going to open up the room to questions. Are there any questions for the doctors? Yes. Thank you. Why is it important to eliminate ultrasound from cataract surgery? I have no idea why. Yeah, so it is well known that um, you cannot totally focus ultrasound. It is like waves, so it goes to all the sites. And it is well known in the literature that ultrasound damages the endothelium. Uh -huh.
I have a question for Dr. Fisher. Uh, did you look at a comparison of um, uh, visual outcomes with the Aura and the or, or the Aura Plus Verify versus manual, taking the femto second laser without? And I'm, I'm curious if you have uh, either any data or any intuitive feel of how much of the benefit you're getting is from the femto laser versus from the uh, the Aura system. Sure. Um, in, in this particular study, we did not look at that. We're looking at including that in a future study um, because I think that would be quite helpful to know. Um, in looking at data presented by other researchers at this meeting and other meetings, um, I think a very large part of the increase in accuracy is definitely due to the femtosecond laser. There's just no question. Um, the Verify seems to add, the, the, the intraoperative aberrometry seems to add, you know, an additional effect and I think they're complementary, but I think really the combination of the two technologies together is what's giving us this greatest level of accuracy. For Dr. Dr. Schultz, uh, did, you, did you look at uh, endothelial density or any measures of uh, inflammation with the uh, ultrasound results? So in this large group, we didn't look at all patients at this results, but we published a study in October in the Journal of Refractive and Cataract Surgery. And in this study, um, we saw a significant, well, it was a significant difference between the um, ultrasound group and the femto group. Um, the endothelial cell loss was lower. Yep. So also was Conrad Hengerer, the first house. Oh yes, uh, and a question for Dr. Schultz. You have such a, a large series. Uh, I'm curious if you looked at visual outcomes in the ways that Dr. Holzer and Dr. Fisher uh, looked at out visual outcomes comparing the you know, with the laser to manual. Yeah, but I'm sorry, but in this large group, we we, did, we didn't look at visual outcomes yet. Are there any other questions? Great. Well, thank you all for coming today, and um, thanks for...